Von Martin, the Hottie Shoes. Uh, what are we, 88? Two fat ladies? Two fat, non-gender specific. Thank you very much. This week we are talking uh, the Champions League final. Yes. We're also going to, you know... The final countdown. The... Final, Liverpool, Spurs, can that game live up to the majesty of those semi-finals? We're going to talk that. We're yeah. going to talk uh, what having such dominance, it seems, from English teams in Europe this season. So you're saying you like Europe? Yeah, so we like Europe. So this mm. we're going to call the, oh, I don't know. The final countdown. We'll stay there for a bit. So should we we'll call stay it in the remain section? We are going to talk about what English teams are doing in Europe, why they're doing it, how they're doing it, what this means to the Premier League. The importance of Europe, what's going on in Europe. We're then going to move There's on to actual Europe. There's lots of great things in Europe. I don't think we should just be limited. No, nope. There's a lot going on. We need on. to look outside of the... We do need to look outside Into the Europe. We're looking at the... And skip hand in hand with them into the future. We're talking Syria. We're talking the, the quickness of a football career. Yes. We're going to have some feedback. Yes. And then we're going to do, it says here on my list, Aston we're going to do Villa. an outro. So, yeah, thanks very much, you know, Hello. for listening Hairy to that. Hairy footballers? No. Saturday, the 1st of June, something big is happening. <clears throat> okay, what is it? Champions League final. No, yeah, where, has it been shown anywhere? Or? Oh, we're showing it. We're hosting a watch party at Little Man Coffee for it. Um, sold out. <laughs> And the tickets we sold out in the first 46 minutes which is phenomenal mm. um but yeah so thank you very much for that but the biggest story oh, is liverpool, liverpool playing Tom liverpool Hotspur. versus spurs now um will this final live up to the drama of those two semi-finals I, which i'm still not over now alex i'm not over hey, it now hey i it, still feel a bit of a wreck hey, after that ajax spurs game th th that lucas Moore performance it's one of the most that Just semi-final win for Spurs in and we were lucky enough to watch we watched it together we, did. we watched it after it was on while we were recording an episode of this podcast so we were watching it live and then we finished a bit earlier and we got, got to watch the whole second half uninterrupted and it was one of the purest 45 minutes of football I've ever watched Champions League big time big it was time. incredible this and is... my worry is that it's not the final won't live up to it because I feel like there's a certain level of expectation on this final more so than you usually get because it's two English sides but because of the way they both qualified yep. for the semi-final you know with that with Liverpool obviously hammering Barcelona 4-0 at Anfield it feels like this final has got a lot to it's, live up to it's got a ton of potential if it's the most exciting Champions League in recent years for me yeah and I always enjoy the Champions League this one is I'm the most excited about. Who do you want to win? Who do I want to win? Spurs. I won't. I won't. I want Spurs to You'll win. Play to the, to the no, game of Liverpool. Um, I just think You're if not I'm gonna judging it. You're not going to do it. No, look, I'm judging it purely an on an Do you aesthetic. feel that they're an underdog? Who? Spurs? Yes. Massively. Okay. How so? Massively. I think, look, my... I think if I'm taking it from a neutral standpoint, the yes, look, the Liverpool beating Barcelona was a great result. However, it wasn't as great and as romantic, I'll use the word, as the Spurs Ajax one. Now, I think if going forward, I have been saying since October that Spurs look tired. I said at the start. Since, since IKEA. Right. I said. Since when we filmed since live when, in IKEA. We filmed live in IKEA. Since then, I've been saying that Spurs have got a very small... That was the first round of the Nations League fixtures. So I was saying there, Spurs have got an extremely small squad. They haven't bought anyone. Mm. All of those players have just played... Bear in mind, they played in the World Cup. A lot of Spurs players went very far in that tournament. 
Also, think about all the players who went very far in the Euros in 2016. So going back to 2016, you, Poch likes working with a smaller squad, he says. He's had a lot of injuries this year. He nearly lost one of his star players to the Korean Army, which brings its own amount of stress. Big now, love, The Hung South Sun. Korean Army, I should met specify there please specify yeah please specify Hung Min Sun one of our favourite yeah. players this season so all of these factors have come into play and I'd be yeah. saying that it's it Spurs with a few injuries and how long their seasons have been they're going to be tired early and I've been saying for at least like because they slipped off in the league and I've been saying for a while now like they are throwing it away they're Spursing it up because they're so exhausted like they need more players it's also the Harry Kane factor which has yeah, been look, banded around you've heard people on I've heard people on the radio go well it depends if Harry Kane's fit <laughs> off the back of that obviously you can change the game you can certainly do that yeah. but there's too much emphasis on Harry Kane really won't he play considering the results they've got without him look yeah exactly he, they actually do from very very well without Harry Kane I think now, and I was guilty of this myself. You were very we just guilty. just weren't recording this. As, I was guilty of Harry Kane. I underestimated him as a striker. Um, to the point where I said he was just a finisher. Now, part of me thinks you that I've been... Of, you, you, I had a lot of hate. Sent, a lot of that. hate mail sent through. We've never had that before. Like, hate mail. Yeah, we... Like, look, things we, in I bags were coming through. Um... Your it's, face on a mule. <laughs> yeah, that was a good. That was a good one. Um, that I think Spurs have shown this year that I was some. I, look, I say I was fifty percent right and fifty percent wrong on the Harry Kane thing. I think he's a better footballer than I'm actually giving him credit for. I think he's more. There's more to him than a finisher. I will admit that. So, but I will say that my point being that Harry Kane was not this world class recognised forward that people thought he was, has been proven right somewhat by the fact that Spurs actually have got a lot of really good results and kept their form up without Harry Kane. Mm. So they're, they're not overly relying on him. To a way... Uh, I'm trying to think of an example. To the way that Man City somewhat seemed to Aguero. I think Spurs go into this the underdog and I think that'll be a tremendous pull. But either, either side, whatever happens, fantastic for the neutral. It's going to be a great neutral. game. I hope it is a good game, you know? Because, like, how many times have we said there's just no stop in Liverpool? Like, the way they've just gone about their business this, this year, they, it deserves a lot yeah. of credit. Um, copulation, it, it is, it is a, it's been a thing for Liverpool this year. Yeah, it has. It's looked. been huge. So, Liverpool. for them, they, they, obviously, it'd be beneficial for them to win it. For how many times the Spurs get mocked for not winning anything for X amount of years? Uh, and Liverpool, they need something because they haven't for quite a few years as well. So, yeah, look, the Liverpool thing is so exciting. It is exciting. They've done really well. And mm. to be Liverpool, though, imagine. And look, I, I know the season's only just finished. Well, it's not even finished. The league mm. is over, yeah? The What I will say is if Liverpool get... How many points did they finish on? Was it 90, 95? Yeah. 90, something, 97? Something like that? I can't remember. So forgive me. But they... To get that many points and not win the league is disheartening. Mm. To then get to the semi, to get to the final of the Champions League for the second consecutive year and lose that is disheartening. Yep. So if Liverpool lose this game, it could have a huge, huge impact on the psychology of that squad. Yeah. It could. But look, it's in Europe. <laughs> we love Europe here. I know yeah. you do. You keep going on about it. We keep it's great. Going. The final in Madrid, it's going to be uh, incredible. No matter what, no matter what the result, it's going to be fantastic. It's huge. That's what like. That's why Europe's so great. Europe is great, right? Europe is great. We love Europe. We, We're gonna... I really, I love Europe. I should really we, like. Should Europe. we move ahead to the? To the Let's just move section. ahead. We'll move ahead. Should we move ahead to the next section? Yeah, I think so. Okay. No. All right. Who's going to win before we do? Europe. Wait. I gotta say Europe's still on my mind. Oh my god, right, stop banging on about oh, Europe. Not, but it's great. It is great, it's but we've talked about it every it. section. Right. Um why are English clubs dominating dominating seemingly Russian. on uh, all again. fronts? It's gone and noticed how much Arsenal and Chelsea have done that as well. You know? It's also noticed the quality of what they've done to get there. 
Because everyone yeah. thinks that cup is, so, is, is an easier cup to win. It's not. Like, this is the cream of the crop throughout Europe. Uh, and if you follow both teams' progression, yeah. you'll see they both show the extremes amount no, of quality been, to get they've through. They've been interesting. We can't, that's why they're in the final. That's we, why we did, yeah. I tell you now, that's why they're there. So we previewed, the, we previewed the final last week. Um, and it's a very interesting game. As we're recording this, the game is mm. on. So we we need to focus on sort of looking ahead and what the impact of this actually is. Do you think that English sides have dominated in Europe this year? Or Absolutely. Like more than I've ever seen. I can't yeah. think of another time where, where, like look at the finals. It's incredible. It is incredible. It's such that an achievement. Have gone it's in. huge. Um, there's been a more of a... Like tell me that's not good for the Premier League brand. Yeah, there's... It's the, huge. There's been a like little that's bit... Just, for next year, like transfers... <laughs> Wolves qualifying next year for Amazing Europa. story. Um, what it's shown is that it is probably competitive. I said this Atlanta a few weeks ago. Well. No, I said it's competitive from... It's competitive in the bottom. There's about six teams that it's always competitive around. Mm. And then the middle bit's a bit competitive. But this year, the the title and it hasn't been... It's been a competitive title race, but it wasn't competitive from the other teams mm. so like they third was a long way behind you know and it's Chelsea had just just about got there I also, so it's a weirdly I also the, think it eradicates hatred through media for, for like those four teams specifically yeah I think it eradicates that because it shows both the quality on the biggest level and it shows you that the level of competition is extremely high so that's why Man City's treble is to be celebrated because that just doesn't happen very often that is huge because you're usually hoping for one trophy but they've That's broken you records for. they've broken records two years on the trot now yeah. because they broke over the 100 point mark last season for sure and now they've done this it's... but with this it sort of laments those teams that have all the quality to get by look how many times we've we've, we've seen bad press for Chelsea Look how many times it's like beginning of the season. Again, I remember like it's swaying towards, oh, Mo Salah hasn't scored as many as he usually does and Liverpool are looking trash. Yeah. That was at the beginning yeah. of the season. Yeah. And so it just laments the fact that, okay, well, you can't really, it's unjustified to say that at this at this uh, high level of competition. So I think it's nothing but great things. Yeah, look, it's it's done really well. Can I can I throw I this? I love Sarri as well. I think they should give him another, another season. Oh, he definitely deserves it. Sarri hasn't been there long enough. Mm. He didn't have much of a pre-season, and he's deve- he's implementing a new strategy. Look, well, can I, can Emery I... d- has, and he's progressed to this level, regardless if they win it or not. Yeah, and look, Poch has had a renaissance Goody almost. Beneath. You know, Poch has had this almost... Oh, that's beautiful. That's so romantic. A Poch renaissance. His reaction. I think his reaction It was so to... pure. Up. It's a, yeah, the, the semi-final. It made the result purer. Job. Yeah. Because of his reaction to it. Just him and crying. And Real Madrid. Talking about, you know, it, I know that was ridiculous on it, but... Look, a lot of ridiculous yeah, things happening around Madrid that we'll that, talk about all later. All that authenticity of football comes out. I haven't seen that since no, the no. tears of uh, Sir Alex Ferguson when yeah. he won. Yeah, look, the it's all the eyes will de- of Europe will definitely be on the British sides. European eyes because they've they've done remarkably well. Even you know lesser results along the way to the, mm. as such lesser. But look at Spurs. You know that Man City game again. Look, we watched that game. Look how mad that game was when they beat Man City in the Champions League. Then we've they been played Ajax. I think we've been spoiled rotten. We have. Look, they played, but they've some of these sides have left their best form for the European titles they're going for. You know, which is I just want the my pro, my problem with the Premier League this year is it's just it's not as competitive as people have made out as a league. But next year, look, let's move ahead briefly and say next year you've got three additions coming into the Premier League. In Norwich, Sheffield United, and in Aston Villa and now. Villa. Shout out Villa, yes, Shout Pete. Shout out. Um, Blender coach, Pete. We are, we're looking at a huge club coming back in in Villa. We're looking at a team that have done extremely well in the championship in Norwich. They've played some exciting football. And then you're looking at a side that have against all odds scraped in. Can I give a shout out? I would suggest that... I would suggest that suggesting? out of those, Sheffield United are going to struggle next season. I think they will be the plucky underdogs like Cardiff were this year that were desperately trying to hold on. I think that's their role. I think Villa could feasibly finish 
Norwich are going to mid table. I wonder if Norwich are like Fulham when Fulham set fire to the Championship and were brilliant, and they came up to the Premier League and were like, I don't know how to play this way. Don't know what's going on? Really. Yeah, Norwich. That's my fear for Norwich that they come up, they try and play the same football they did in the Championship, and they go, mm. Nah, it don't work up here. Should we do a li- like a little shout out? Yeah, go on then. All right, should we shout right, out? Ju- ju- yeah. Shout out, Grealish. Jackie. Yeah, Jack Grealish. He's come from a lot. He's 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 he's, he's been through the mill basically those boots man the boots were in tatters please see them you have to see them the boots it, he wore for the final were an absolute mess it, they weren't they, they were they were wonderful they, no, were, they were wonderful brilliant. collector's items but yeah and he's done well you know to going from the fact that he looked as though he was joining Spurs to then signing a new contract Shoot. to then being made Sometimes captain things just work out right really Aston nicely. Villa now think of it this way Aston Villa are owned by an Aston Villa fan they're managed by an Aston Villa fan and their captain is an Aston Villa fan. Yeah. Like, to get that club to the Premier League with it's that like ownership... It's a dream team. That is... It's a dream team. Yeah, um, that's exactly what you want as a football fan. If your fan, if your club is being run by somebody who supports Aston, the same club as you mm. and is managed by someone who supports that club as well and is owned by someone who supports the club, that's that's the dream. That is the dream as a so, fan. So, yeah, look, next season... So that's that. It's going to be good. I think that it's the Premier League... I think, how can we sum this up? Competitive league, it, the Premier League is a competitive mm. league. It, it, yes. To a certain extent. Mm. Less mm. so to others because of the gap between second and third. But, Where are you going with this? What's this but, about? Have you got with all those things, you said, the Premier League is actually a pretty damn good league. Thank it? you. Should we end on that? Let's end on The number you have dialed has been changed. Europe, good. Premier League, Good. <laughs> Premier League's good. Premier League's the Champions good. League final is good. Champions League, and Europe is good. Yeah, so it's good. Out, and now we're going to talk about why Serie A is good. And Poch is working miracles. Best manager we've had since Harry. But you know, how are we supposed to compete on all these fronts? It's only a matter of time before others. It's going to take over. So just need the investment. Italy. Italy. That's. I like Italy. That's in Europe. Um, it is in Europe. It's been a really, really, really big weekend for uh, Syria. We just thought we ha- we did talk a bit of Syria last week, but we thought we had to come back because it's been a it's been a, a, a huge change. Like Andrea Barzagli left Juve. Yes, and has retired. We were just talking about Juve. Yeah, um, Allegri. That was his last game in charge of Juve. There's he's, a lot of change, isn't there? Yeah, Daniele De Rossi. Conti. He's leaving Roma. Um, Gattuso. Yeah, Gattuso. Right, since since la- we recorded last week, all those things we knew were happening, but since last week now, Gattuso has left as manager of AC Milan and Leonardo has left as chief executive. So that's... Maldini is still there. Maldini is still is, is there at the minute, but Leonardo has gone. So there's, there's two AC Milan legends leaving a club that are that's massive. in trouble. Yeah, you well, know, they, no, yeah. they are. They are in trouble. Roma again. Roma, look, Roma. Ranier, looking, that Ranieri post. Roma is wonderful. Genuinely made us well up this week. Because yeah. Of how well they've done it, but Roma do things from, very well. They do. One thing from a footballing perspective, however, is next season is a very, very dangerous season for Roma, because they've lost a huge, huge player. They look. They're losing a manager again because he just came in as a SOS sort of deal. Um, yeah. It looks as though did so, a job. Yeah, and they haven't had a successful year this year. They've been more successful on social media than they have on the pitch, and it's going to be a big year for them next year. I think there's a big job on their hands next year, Roma. Uh, as is AC Milan. AC mm. Milan is a huge job. Inter and Atalanta, however, Inter have qualified again for the Champions year, second year in a row, and that's the first time they've done that for years and years and years. Um, and Atalanta, amazingly, Big have qualified Atalanta. for the Champions League for the first time in their history. They finished very good. They had a very, very good season. We shouted these out a long, long time ago, how Atalanta were having one of the best seasons in Europe. And it's continued, and they're in the Champions League, and they thoroughly deserve yeah, it. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, can we move across to Spain? Let's go to Spain. Let's go to Spain. Espanol. Um, Sergio Ramos. Yeah. 
Sergio Ramos in one of the craziest stories that we've heard. That is, yeah. Which which side do you align to? Right. Well, what I can't because we were we in jest said ha 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 when he got yellow carded with that match suspension. Yeah, no, it's real. It's it's. Then Ramos, he, was, isn't it? he was filming his own documentary, so they say. But yes, he was. Look, there is the same. You could be say, cynical about it. They can, they they. The point is, Real Madrid have got full control over that player, so they can instantly say, "Well, no, it's you're it, not moving." We'll, well turn no, it down. look, it's interesting. Rot that, in the reserve. It's, yeah, it's interesting that what's happened is that Real Madrid have said, you know, Perez has come out and said, "Look, is it him and his agent came to speak to me, and they said we've had a lucrative offer from China." Can you? But due to the regulations of the team in the league, they can't offer a transfer fee. So can you rescind his contract, and he'll leave Real Madrid on a free? And Perez was sort of said, "I just said no. I can't let you leave on a free. You're captain of Real Madrid. Of course, I can't let you leave on a free. That sets a dangerous precedent for the rest of the squad." And then, Ramos looks as though it's. And then. Yeah, Ramos just looks like he wants to be gone. You know. He survived so many years in that in that if not the most pressurised team to play in. Because if you can't get and they don't take to you, no matter how good Gareth Bale is, no matter what type of, like, how good you are, Ronaldo, yeah, when he was there last season, yeah, you're going to cop a lot of stick because of it. Stick, cop, lot. It's a, you are, it's the it's biggest a stage. And those Real fans Madrid's are, if not some of the people. toughest fans to, to appease. They are. You can never appease Real Madrid fans. You know, this is a team that sacked the Champions League winning manager because he didn't win La Liga. Mm. That's the level that you're at here. He won the Champions League, but because he finished second in La Liga, they sacked him. Mm. That's a huge amount of pressure. So for Ramos to navigate and almost become... People forget that Sergio Ramos is not Real Madrid, you know, born and bred. They forget that they bought him. That's how synonymous this player has become with the club. Um, I don't like that outsider mentality though is it is, is gets in the way of a lot it does it's just it's a mate is i just think it's a mark of a man that he's he wasn't you know didn't come up through the youth ranks you mm-hmm. know he was bought in but he's become a legend of that club i think he's you know he's been a magnificent servant we all know what sergio ramos is he's snidey you know you know what he's going to be i think but he's, he's still, a great center he's still back. considered if not one of the best center backs in the world right now uh, he's he's what he's at. There. He's always been there consistently, though. Tell you what, I'd love to 33. see. I would love to see Sergio Ramos play in Italy. Like I'd love to. I'd love to see him play in the I Premier think League he, as I well. Think I just. That, then. I said, look, I said in jest. He can suit both, but that's what makes him a world class. Well, centre. look, I said in jest, um, when uh, Bluebell's Adam Hewins was on the podcast at Broken Hair. Shout out to both. Um, I suggested as a joke what Liverpool should have done this season was sign Sergio Ramos to partner Van Dijk DVD. because it, I think of all the drama between Sergio Ramos and Liverpool fans after that final where they said he injured Salah mm. on purpose yeah and did a fall over yeah he, you know, that's what the narrative was so imagine if Klopp went okay right we're bringing Ramos in that would have been great to watch and I don't think it's out of the question that he joins at Liverpool. I really don't. I think Ramos could end up in a lot of places. Premier League, I'd like to see him in Italy just because I'm greedy to see players play in Italy. Um, and it's a romantic place for a 33-year-old to rock up. Like, any club in Italy would have him, except potentially Juve. Hmm. Any club in Italy would snap your arm hmm. off right now, says your Ramos, and in China. to play at your back. Especially at Atletico hmm. Madrid. Atletico Madrid, Godin is leaving. He's going to Inter, which is an interesting signing. Um, they've lost... Who's their right-back that they've lost? I'm going to forget names here. But the Atletico Madrid's back lot... Like Juanfran. Juan they Fran. lost Juanfran. They just came to me then. Shouted Juanfran at you. Juanfran. Um, he's left. There's a lot of players that have left Atletico Madrid. So they need centre-backs. And he's a great... He's a great one. And someone you else wants to as, well. as well. I absolutely adore to see him at Manchester United. Like he, he'd be exactly what that Man United squad needs right now, Sergio Ramos. Um, he's not. He's not going to do that, is he? I. He's not going to do that. He'll no, he's not. Now. And Pochi's working miracles. Best manager we've had since Harry. But you know, I'm always supposed to compete on all these fronts. It's only a matter of time before others. It's going to take over. So just need the investment. This week, 
we've got a little bit more feedback. It's my favourite. Yeah. <clears throat> so we've got a mixture section. of people today. We had a call in from Jason Cundy, who just yeah. says, shut up. Uh, that was left on the voicemail. George Ware's cousin. Again. He, again. Uh, it, it wasn't good what he said. And no. as a result, well, I did I did kick him out of our WhatsApp group. Right. I think now you need to stop. I think we need to block him because this is the third time now he's, he's caused that, us an he's issue. Kicked, he's kicked out of the group. George Ware's cousin, he's becoming an issue. Andrew Impey, he left a foul mouth tirade. Sean sent Ledger, said great stuff, and then he thought he hung up, but he actually didn't, and he was just uh, let off a, another foul mouth rant against Big Ron. Bucky to be honest. Yeah. Ariana Grande says spectacular. Yeah. Elton John. Elton John. The rocket man himself. Rocket man. He got a bit annoyed because I actually asked what rocket man was about, and he couldn't actually answer it there was an, one more message as well i'm not sure if it got left it was either casey keller or yuri geller but i could not differentiate the two well what was the message and we'll decipher who it was was it yuri it was geller just saying we, we think you do a good job keep going that could be either geller or keller and then i sort of went into a little bit of a trance but that could just be casey no that's that's the that is all the feedback for this one Good episode this week, I think. We've had a jaunt. We've had... It's been mm. up and down. It's been all around. It's been left, right. It's been everywhere, Alex, this week. Um, Europe, outside of Europe, inside of Europe. Yeah, all, all around over. Europe. So, yeah, this week, um, on Saturday, we now have um, our Champions League watch party, a little mug of coffee that's First sold out. Kind. First of its kind. First of its kind, we're going to have a Champions League watch party with a load of people, live podcast, mm. interactive. It's going to be good. That's sold out now. If you have got a ticket, thank you very much for getting involved yes. and asking for one. Big shout out to you. Um, Should be fun. Also then, looking ahead, July the 10th, we have our quiz show oh, at Little Man Coffee. Uh, tickets available for that. If you just go onto Facebook and go onto events, you'll see it on there. And then there's a ticket link on there for Eventbrite. So buy your tickets that's for that. Easy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we got to say this week. Have you got nice. anything else to add? I, I, hey, I, I've covered, covered it. Yeah, got a lot on. Right, that's it.